Hey, what's up guys? In this video we're going to be taking a look at how police LiDAR guns work. Uh, the way you use them in practice is uh, they're always going to have a viewfinder, unlike a radar gun, and you're basically going to look through the viewfinder at the target vehicle. Uh, there's a crosshair in the viewfinder. You basically drop that right on whatever vehicle it is that you want to clock and then pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger, there's going to be a speed that will display in the viewfinder and oftentimes as well on the back of the laser gun. And then, a bam there you go, you've got your speed. Uh, the way that it works with uh, kind of the business end of the LiDAR gun, you'll notice there's not one but two different lenses here. They have different purposes. Uh, one of it is going to be the laser transmitter, which is actually sending the LiDAR beam out towards the target vehicle. The other lens is going to be used to receive the reflections coming back from the vehicle. So two lenses. Now, the way that it works is uh, if we take a look at kind of how a LiDAR gun does its thing, it's not actually measuring the speed of a vehicle, it's measuring the distance to the vehicle over and over and over and then calculating the speed from that. So it's kind of a glorified rangefinder. It's not measuring speed, it's measuring distance. Uh, now let's take a look at how this works. Uh, if this right here is our LiDAR gun and this is the vehicle that we want to target, what's going to happen is when we pull the trigger there's going to be a very, very short pulse of light that's going to travel from the LiDAR gun to the target vehicle bounce off of it and reflect back towards the LiDAR gun. And it's going to do this over and over and over. So rather than sending one short burst of uh, LiDAR, it's going to send tons of them for as long as you hold down the trigger. So you'll see we've got pulse, 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 which are green transmitted pulses. And then reflected back from the vehicle, it's going to be our orange received pulses. Pulse, 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 pulse. So what it's doing is it's measuring the like, a series of pulses coming back from the vehicle. Now let's take a look at how it figures out the speed from that. Now we know that light travels at the speed of light. That's a constant, that's a known, that's a given. So we know what the speed of light is. Uh, we can then measure the time that it takes for the pulse to travel from the LiDAR gun to the vehicle and back again. The distance that it's traveling that pulse of light, the time of flight, is from the LiDAR gun here and back is actually two times the distance from the LiDAR gun to the vehicle, right? You've got this distance, but the light has to travel from here to here to here again. So the light pulse is actually traveling twice the distance between the LiDAR gun and the vehicle. Uh, this is going to be important. We'll come back to this in just a second. Now, the way that we measure speed, it's very simple. It's basically distance divided by time. That's how you measure speed. Like, for example, You've got miles per hour, or meters per second. It's basically dividing distance by time, distance by time, right? If you travel 60 miles an hour, you're basically doing 60 miles in one hour, right? Or if you're traveling 10 meters a second, that's 10 meters divided by one second. So distance divided by time. Distance divided by time is how you calculate speed. Now, in this case, with one pulse, what we know is actually the speed. We know the speed of light. And we know the time, we're basically measuring the time that it takes for the pulse to travel from the LiDAR gun to the vehicle and back again. And from these two, we can calculate distance. So if we rearrange this equation, uh, we're going to multiply both sides by time, and we get distance equals speed times time. Awesome. So what we're going to do is basically say the distance from here to here is what we want to calculate, right? So we can say the distance that the pulse travels is equal to the speed of light, times the time that it takes for the pulse to go here, to here, to here. Awesome. So that's the distance that the pulse travels. But that's not actually what we're interested in. We're not interested in the distance from here, to here, to here. We're interested in just the distance between the LiDAR gun to the moving vehicle. And since the pulse has to travel twice the distance, right, we're just going to take that distance and divide it by two. Very simple. So the distance from the LiDAR gun to the vehicle is going to be the speed of light times the time that it takes to travel divided by 2. Awesome. So now we know this distance. Very cool. So now what we're going to do is we can take a look back again and we can say, okay, well, now I can calculate distance. Very cool. But I'm not concerned with how far away the target is from me. I want to know the speed of that target, right? How do I calculate the target speed from the distance? Well, if I can measure the change in distance divided by the change in time, I can calculate the speed. Awesome. So what I need to do is measure the distance over and over and over and over again. That's why a LiDAR gun is going to be sending out not one pulse, but a whole series of pulses. Awesome. Let's take a look at that. So here's a chart here. 
Uh, what we're going to be taking a look at, again, if we go up here, green is going to be our transmitted pulses, and orange is going to be our reflected received pulses, right? So let's take a look. We've got a series of pulses. If we look at just the green pulses, we're going to be transmitting pulse, 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 pulse. Cool. And then, again, it's going to take time for that light to travel to the vehicle. Back again. That is going to be the time of flight. So our orange pulses are going to be our received pulses reflected from the vehicle. So transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. Transmitted, received. And we just do this over and over and over again. And we know that the time of flight is the distance between when we transmit our pulse and when we receive our pulse, right? That's going to be our time of flight, which again, we can plug into our equation here. So the distance from the LiDAR gun to the vehicle is going to be the speed of light times the time of flight divided by 2. Awesome. So now we're going to be able to measure the distance over and over, turn that into speed. Let's do that. So let's say that our... Uh, our example LiDAR gun just happens to be designed to, pro, er, designed to transmit at 100 pulses per second. And it's doing so in a very regular fashion. So every second, it's going to transmit 100 pulses. So every 1 100th of a second, it's going to transmit a pulse, right? So pulse, 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 pulse. Cool. Now, let's say that every time it transmits a pulse, it measures the distance of the vehicle, and it just so happens that uh, with pulse 1, we're going to be Measuring the distance to our target is going to be 1,000 feet. The next pulse, 999 feet, then 998, then 997. And we're noticing that as we're measuring this series of pulses, the vehicle is going to be getting a foot closer with every pulse. After 100 pulses, the vehicle is now only 900 feet away. Cool. So what does this tell us? This tells us that uh, you know every time we shoot a pulse, which happens 1 100th of a second, the vehicle moves a foot closer towards us. So it travels one foot every one one hundredth of a second. Cool. Now we know that after a hundred pulses, the vehicle has traveled a hundred feet. So it's traveling one hundred feet every second. So that's the speed of our vehicle. It's traveling a hundred feet per second. Now we can just do some really simple math and convert feet per second to miles per hour. And now we have our vehicle speed in a unit of measurement that we use commonly, which happens to be miles per hour. So there we go. If we happen to be seeing return distances like this, we can then calculate that a vehicle moving, you know, at these distances would translate to a speed of 68 miles per hour. And then in the viewfinder and on the back of the LiDAR gun, it'll display 68 miles per hour. That's how a LiDAR gun gets to speed. Now, a quick note, we could theoretically calculate it by just two different pulses. If all we need to know is the change in distance divided by the change in time, we could just take a look at the change in distance, which is one foot, and divide it by the change in time, which is one one hundredth of a second, and we could then calculate a speed. However, the typical signal acquisition speed for a LiDAR gun is generally about a third of a second, and it's for a reason. They want a whole series of pulses. You know, when a, a police officer is going to be getting a speeding ticket, they have to verify that, yes, my LiDAR gun works properly, it's been calibrated, certified, all this kind of stuff, and they have to say that, you know, my LiDAR gun is working properly so that it holds up in court. So one of the things that uh, the LiDAR gun manufacturers have done is they want to make sure that they have a really good lock. You know, if your hands are shaking, the LiDAR gun is going to be shooting all over the place and you're going to get really wonky results. If these distances are moving because you're shooting at maybe different parts of the car, again, you're going to get really wonky results. So what the LiDAR gun is going to look for is a very predictable, steady set of distances like this that makes sense, you know? If the distances are going all over the place, the LiDAR gun is like, this doesn't make any sense, I'm not going to return a speed. So what the LiDAR gun is looking for is a series of return pulses that look like something that makes sense. It looks like a vehicle that's driving towards the LiDAR gun or a vehicle that's driving away, right? And so it's for that reason that you have to have a whole bunch of different pulses for it to operate. So while in theory, mathematically, you could just take a look at two pulses, the LiDAR gun is going to wait until it has a whole bunch of pulses in order to calculate a speed. Therefore, it can say that I'm much more confident that the speed that I'm displaying makes sense and it really is the moving speed of the target vehicle. So there you go. That's how a LiDAR gun works. It's basically measuring you know, the change in distance over time and then using that to calculate the speed. So, cool.
Uh, if you're wondering how a radar gun works, it actually uses a completely different principle. It's not the same thing as a LiDAR gun. So if you're wondering about how a radar gun works, uh, take a look at my video on how police radar guns work. You can click on the video on screen or click in the link uh, in the video description. So, cool. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, like, do all that cool youtube -y stuff, and uh, awesome. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.